Ramanandan Mahadevan uh, has, uh, in fact, uh, uh, sent his video recording. He is not able to directly participate in the symposium. Uh, I request uh, Koti Garu to play the video recording sent by Dr. J. Raman Mahadevan. I will read out the uh, brief introduction of uh, uh, Dr. Jairaman Mahadevan. Dr. Jairaman Mahadevan is the Professor and Dean, Division of Yoga and Spirituality in Yasyasa Deemed University. Jairaman Mahadevan holds a PhD in Sanskrita from the University of Madras. 2006-2010, to topic the doctrine of Tantra Yukti, a study. He underwent traditional Gurukula education in Vedas, Taitriya Shaka Mula, and uh, Prasthanatraya Shastras 1998-2005 in Veda Vijnana Gurukulam, Bengaluru, under Pracharya Kotemane Ramachandra Bhatt. He is currently Director of Division of Textual Research in Yoga Indic Academy. He earlier served as the Director Research Department of Krishnamacharya Yoga Mandiram, Chennai for over a decade. His experience is in the field of yoga, academics and research has been recognized and utilized by various academic and research organizations by nominating him to various academic boards and councils, including the Traditional Knowledge Digital Library, CSIR Government of India, Top Sports Member, Kalakshetra Foundation, Governing Board Member, Ministry of Culture, Government of India, Chennai. He recently received the uh, Sanskrit Grantha Purastara from Karnataka Sanskrit University for his Sanskrit book, Mantrasta Chintanam. His uh, Tamil translation of the Sanskrit text, Hatha Yoga Pradipika, was published earlier this year by Indika. Now, Sri Kotigaru, please play the video. Namaste. Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Om Sahana Bhavatu, Sahano Punaktu, Sahabi Jankara Bhavahai, Tejasvina Vati Tamastuma Vidvishavahai, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. <coughs> Namaste to one and all. I would like to share my views or present my thoughts on the contribution of Acharya Vachaspati Mishra to the yogic fraternity, yogic literature, especially just focusing on the Ashtanga Yoga as per Yoga Sutras. So as is very well aware, <clears throat> as everyone is very, very well aware about the stellar contributions of Acharya Vachaspati Mishra, I would just like to highlight uh, the insightful uh, views of uh, Acharya Vajaspati Mishra in uh, the field of yoga, especially focusing on the Ashtanga Yoga dimension. The, within the limited time that is available, I may not be able to present the, the entire working of the mind of Acharya Vajaspati Mishra, but just I would like to introduce the glimpses uh, or present the glimpses of uh, the wonderful contribution just to focusing only on the Ashtanga Yoga dimension. Now, <clears throat> with regard to the work of Acharya Vajaspati Mishra on the Yoga Sutras, his work is called as Tattva Vaisharadi. You can see that uh, the primary commentary to Yoga Sutra is by Acharya Vyasa, Vyasa Bhashyam. On that, many sub-commentaries were written. So, Vyasa's commentary is the primary commentary. And upon that, many sub-commentaries were written. So, the first among the sub-commentaries that are available is the Tattvavaisharati commentary of Vajaspati Mishra. Apart from him, after him, we see the Vivarana by Acharya Shankara and then Yoga Vartika by Vijnana Bhikshu and Bhaswati by Hariharanandaranya in successive periods. But Acharya Vachaspati Mishra stands as the primary sub-commentator on Vyasa's primary commentary. So uh, this is his work. Uh, and then, now when we get into 
the yogic insights <clears throat> or the contributions or the commentary of uh, Acharya Vachaspati Mishra, we can see that the very beginning, the Mangala Shloka itself is very poetic in nature. Though yoga is a very important, serious uh, spiritual discipline, but still the, the commentary begins in a very delightful poetic note uh, of Vachaspati Mishra. Vachaspati Mishra Satatva Vaisharati begins in a very delightful note when we see he writes this uh, Mangala Shloka Namami Jagadutpati Hetave Vrshaketave Klesha Karma Vipakadi Rahitaya Hitaya Cha. So, uh, Shloka with uh, Anuprasa that is there. So, Namami, I salute whom Vrshaketave, Namami Vrshaketave. I salute Vrshaketu, Lord Shiva, who has uh, the insignia of the bull or Vrshabha Nandi in his flag. And uh, how is this Vrishaketu? Jagadutpati Hetu. So Lord Shiva he is the cause of the creation of the world. So here Hetave, Jagadutpati Hetave, Vrishaketave, Hetave and Ketave are rhyming. And then the Klesha Karma Vipata, the Rahitaya Hitaya. <clears throat> so he is uh, free from Klesha, Karma Vipaka, etc. Rahita. And then Hitaya Cha is also beneficial. So this also brings out the essence of Yoga Sutra while delightfully saluting Shiva, Lord Shiva to overcome the probable obstacles towards the completion of the work. He also brings in the Yoga Sutra uh, principle where we see Klesha Karma Vipaka Shera Paramrishta Purusha Vishesha Ishwaraha. And then, so that definition of Ishwara is captured in this. And then what does Ishwara do in the context of Yoga Sutra? The role of Ishwara is Hitayacha, is beneficial. How does Ishwara, what is the role of Ishwara according to Patanjali's Yoga Sutra? He, Ishwara Pranidhana Dva, means he is the one who blesses the practitioner who surrenders, who expresses devotion to attain Samadhi Hita. What is the highest benefit or highest grace that a yogic practitioner can attain? That is the attainment of the state of Samadhi. The elusive state of Samadhi can be attained by the blessings of Shiva. So, hence, uh, so this is not only a, a poetic, uh, delightful, poetic, uh, rhyming uh, beginning, but it also is a Mangala Charana and it is also... Uh, connected to or kind of captures the essence of the principles of uh, the important, the centrality, uh, the uniqueness. See, what is unique in Yoga Sutra in comparison to Sankhya, one of the major aspects of difference is the concept of Ishwara, which is not to be found in the Sankhya Siddhanta, whereas in Yoga Siddhanta, we find Ishwara Pranidhanam being repeated thrice in the self-same Yoga Sutra. So hence, so many ideas are conveyed through this simple-looking Anushtup Shloka. So the poetic beauty and then uh, the essence of Yoga Sutra, the, the, the centrality of Ishwara Pranidhana, the difference between Sankhya and Yoga, everything is uh, brought about through this. And then, so uh, so this is how the commentary Tattva Vaisharadi begins. This itself shows that uh, a marvelous beginning, so which which promises much in the, uh, uh, the sub subsequent commentary literature. Now let us get into when we go ahead, when we see that the poetry dimension of the commentary does not end here. Acharya Vachaspati Mishra continues, uh, uh, where at the end of all the four chapters, as you are aware. Yoga Sutra has four chapters, Samadhi Pada, Sadhana Pada, Vibhuti Pada and Kaivalya Pada. At the end of each of the chapter, the summary or the essence of all the chapters are conveyed or captured through a summary shloka. So at the end of the first chapter, he writes, Yoga Syodhesha Nardeshau, Tadartham Rutilakshanam, Yoga Upaya Prabhedascha, Pades Min Upavarnitaha. So the Uddesha and Nardesha of Yoga, and uh, that is Chitta Vritti Nirodha, and what are the Chitta Vrittis, the Uddesha and Nirdesha are done, and then Vritti Lakshanam, what is the definition of uh, the Vrittis, and uh, Yoga Upaya, that is uh, <coughs> the 
Shraddha, Virya, Smriti, Samadhi, all those and then Padayas Min Uparanitaha is the essence of the first Pada. Kriya Yogam Jagav Kleshan Vipakan Karmana Viha Tad Dukhatvam Tatha Vyuhan Padaya Yogasya Panchakam. In the second Pada, the, uh, the Panchakam or uh, from Yama to uh, Pratyahara that has been mentioned and then uh, we see that uh, in the same uh, second chapter, we see that uh, how the karma vipaka gives uh, leads to a lot of suffering and then uh, kleshas and then the karmas and then kriya yoga. All these are conveyed in the second chapter. So that is captured in this one simple shloka. And then in the third chapter, atrantarangan yangani uh, parinama prapanchitaha sanyama adbhuta sanyogaha in the third chapter, the centrality of Sanyamas are given. Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi uh, is called as uh, Sanyama. And then also in the third chapter, Antarangas are presented. Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi again, they are also called as Antarangas. And then the three Parinamas, the Chitta Parinamas, Bhutendriya Parinamas. So the <clears throat> Dharma Lakshana, Avastha Parinama and then Nirodha, Samadhi, Ekagrata Parinamas, all these pra Parinamas are described and finally Jnanam Vivekajam. So Viveka Jnana, Kshanak, uh, uh, kshanak Krama uh, Sanyama leads to that Vivekajam Jnanam that is also presented, that is also a central theme in the third chapter that is also presented So in the, as the essence. And then the fourth chapter's essence is presented at the end of the commentary of Tattva Vaisharadi by Acharya Vachaspati Mishra. You can see, Muktyar Hachittam Paralokame Yagnyasiddhaye Dharmaghanas Samadhihi Dvayicha Mukti Pratipaditasmin Pade Prasangadapicha Anyaduktam. So hence, so what is the state of a mind which is now ready for attaining Mukti? And then how to attain that uh, uh, the state of Purusha, how to become established in the state of Purusha for that, what is Dharmaghana Samadhi, what is Dharma Megha Samadhi that is described, Dvayicha Mukti, that is Swarupe Avasthanam Kaivalyam. So two dimensions of Mukti, the Purusha becomes a Swarupa Avasthita and then there is Kaivalya, there is a the, the prakriti is left alone. So hence, pratipadita asmin prasanga da picha anya duktam. So depending upon the context, some other siddhi panchakam and such other concepts are also discussed. So in this way, if one just reads through this four shlokas, one will get the essence of uh, each of the four chapters. No, sir, I don't have time to read each of the shloka. Can just one shloka be given which conveys the entire essence of Yoga Sutra? That is also done by Acharya Tattva uh, Vachaspati Mishra at the last, towards the end, the last chapter. He also has given the entire essence of the Yoga Sutras in just one shloka. Nidanam tapanam uditamatha tapascha kathitaha sahangai rashtabhihi vihidamiha yoga dvayamapi kruto mukte radhva guna purusha bhedas phutataraha viviktam kaivalyam parigalita tapa chitirasau. So in this way, the, the entire, if one expands this, the Yoga Sutra essence is there. So what are the type of tapas? And then uh, what are the uh, Ashtangas and then the Kriya Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga and then uh, what is the path towards Kaivalyam, what is the difference between Gunas and the Purushas. So all these and then finally how the Parigalita Tapa Chiti Rasav, how the Chiti or the consciousness uh, is freed from the connection, from all these suffering. So that is presented. So in four or five points, in this one uh, very concise shloka, the summary of the entire text is presented. See this, all the, how is this possible? <laughs> if the, uh, the entire text is completely studied, then such a summary uh, can come about. It cannot just come about by a superficial study and also a mind which is well trained in the Pada Vakya Pramana Shastras in Vyakarana, in Mimamsa, and also in Nyaya Shastra, that mind which is trained through the Shastric uh, methodology, that can capture the entire essence and present it in such a precise, uh, concise uh, and uh, tight manner. So this is another beauty and uh, the greatness of the commentary of Acharya Vajaspati Mishra. And these are unique. <clears throat> 
ideas which 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 uh, approaches which uh, which is which are found only in traditional commentaries so whereas in the current day commentaries you write in various other uh, especially in english there are a lot of elaborations but to get the summary in a nutshell and that too in an authentic way so these are the unique aspects that you can see from the traditional commentaries now let us just get into the ashtanga dimension with these introductory aspects so we see that uh, uh, for the very purpose of doing ashtanga yoga is uh, to attain viveka khyati so yoga anga anusthanat ashuddhi kshaye jnana deepi a viveka khyate the yoga angas patanjali maharshi says the yoga angas are practiced to attain viveka khyati so and that viveka khyati is uh, described in one of the previous sutras as aviplava hana upaya so uh, viveka khyati is the hana upaya hana means the state of kaivalya freedom from suffering so what is the upaya for that the primary upaya is viveka khyati khyati is clear knowledge viveka means the discrimination that this is prakriti and this is purusha purusha is separate prakriti is separate so that is the viveka and interestingly there the word aviplava is used and the entire <clears throat> uh, ashtanga yoga is done to attain this viveka khyati okay so in this yoga sutra uh, 2.26 we see a qualifying term that is aviplava what is aviplava so for that there are general translations a general understanding but uh, what is a systematic understanding of aviplava Mm. so uh, for that you can see that acharya vachaspati mishra uh, gives this commentary agamanumanabhyam api viveka khyati rasti nachaso vyutthanam uh, tat samskaram va nivartayati tadvatah api tad anuvrutte riti tan nivrutyartham aviplava iti <coughs> so the acharya shank uh, vachaspati mishra does not just give the meaning of the word aviplava but first he analyzes why the word aviplava is used normal the general understanding of the meaning of the word viplava means that which is a shaky aviplava means that which is a firm in mundakopanishad we have plavahi ete adridha yagna roopa so plava and adridha are placed close by so which means not firm so but viveka khyati should be aviplava which should be steady and firm so in this context so that is the general meaning but what is the specific contextual meaning so acharya vachaspati mishra says that viveka khyati that prakriti is different purusha is different can come from agama also means from the pre existing verbal testimony or textual literature and by anumana also by using one's inferential faculty by an analytical mind also we can see oh these are the characteristics of prakriti these are the characteristics of purusha they are separate so by verbal testimony and also by inference viveka khyati can be attained but such a verbal testimony may not be aviplava may not be steady so for that Uh, there should be a special effort so uh, to indicate that so it is not merely viveka khyati it should be aviplava viveka khyati while agama viveka khyati and anumana viveka khyati may be viplava so by adding this aviplava adjective the uh, the viveka khyati or the clarity that prakriti is different purusha is different should be attained by some other means more than shruta and anumana from verbal testimony and um, the inferential practice so that is indicated by the term aviplava so that is why the term aviplava is used so this is the way in which uh, the commentaries traditional commentaries approach every terminology or significant terminologies they are not just given the meaning and then so after giving that vachaspati mishra acharya vachaspati mishra gives the meaning of the word after giving this context then he gives the meaning of viplava viplavo mithya gnanam tadrahita so that is the gnana that comes from agama that comes from anumana may there is a possibility that there is a competing 
wrong knowledge because the world always mixes up prakriti and purusha and then gives that mithya jnana the wrong knowledge that i may it, this is an admixture of prakriti purusha so hence though on the one side of my mind i may from the agama and anumana know that prakriti and purusha are different but uh, there is a coexistence of this uh, wrong knowledge also if the wrong knowledge is there then my viveka khyati is viplava viveka khyati without that wrong knowledge it becomes aviplava viveka khyati so hence etad uktam bhavati acharya vachaspati mishra clarifies shrutamayena jnanena vivekam grihitva yuktimayena vyavasthaapy ದೀರ್ಘ ಕಾಲ ನೈರಂತರ್ಯ ಸತ್ಕಾರ ಸೇವಿತಾಯ ಭಾವನಾಯಾ ಪ್ರಕರ್ಷ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ಸಮಾಧಿಗತ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ಕಾರವತಿ ವಿವೇಕ ಖ್ಯಾತಿ ನಿರ್ವರ್ತಿತ ವಾಸನಾ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ಜ್ಞಾನ ನಿರ್ವಿಪ್ಲವ ಹಾನೋಪಾಯ ಸೊ ಹೌ ಟು ಅಟೈನ್ ದಟ್ ವಿವೇಕ ಜ್ಞಾನ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಅವಿಪ್ಲವ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕ್ಲಾರಿಫೈಡ್ ಬೈ ಏತದುಕ್ತಂ ಭವತಿ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ analytical summary as to how to make this uh, hanopaya aviplava so uh, while the shruta gnana and anumana gnana are uh, are also sources of viveka gnana uh, they are the preliminary steps so he says shrutamayena gnanena vivekam grihitva so it is from the agamas that for the first time i understand that purusha is different prakriti is different so grihitva and then yuktimayena vyavasthapya by my own manana procedures i clearly organize my thoughts better so out of shraddha i receive that purusha and prakriti are different that is viveka gnana and then by my own analytical activity i clearly establish it in my mind so uh, analytical clarity comes by mere analytical clarity nothing happens he says ದೀರ್ಘಕಾಲ ನೈರಂತರ್ಯ ಸತ್ಕಾರ ಸೇವಿತಾಯ ಭಾವನಾಯ ಪ್ರಕರ್ಷ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ದೆನ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ವಿಜುವಲೈಸ್ 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 ಫಾರ್ ಅ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ಯಾಟಿಕಲಿ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಫೇಸ್ ದಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ರಿಯಾಲಿಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಭಾವನಾ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ರೀಚ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ಲಾರಿಟಿ yes this is the right path purusha and prakriti indeed are two different entities so one should attain the state of samadhi with that notion it should not merely remain as an intellectual conviction it it should be processed dirga kala nairantarya and satkara such abhyasa of the samadhi are to be done and then the sakshatkara of prakriti and purusha being different from each other so when that comes about that is when the real aviplava viveka khyati will come about so to such extent it has to be analyzed but on the other hand we can see certain uh, translations uh, we can see that the aviplava viveka khyati is merely translated as uninterrupted so when this is the shastrik uh, depths to which the commentator has gone out of the way to clarify the term uh, viplava and aviplava so the translators they simply say it is uninterrupted so by no way can we call this aviplava as uninterrupted while this has so much of such an analysis behind this see even in the traditional dictionaries or acclaimed sanskrit english dictionaries you have the meanings confusion perplexity uh, floating drifting about floating in different direction this is the meaning of viplava and the opposite is aviplava nowhere can you find the meaning uh, float or uh, uninterrupted in in any of these dictionaries or neither does this suit the context so one of these commentaries or one of the translations by edwin bright it comes nowhere near what actually has been meant by the traditional commentators and very very clearly clarifying the intent of each and every expression especially very critical expression this is hana upaya the upaya to attain kaivalya so that's a very critical term that has been very systematically clarified by acharya 
ವಾಚಸ್ಪತಿ ಮಿಶ್ರ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಷ್ಟಾಂಗ ಯೋಗ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಅಷ್ಟಾಂಗ ಯೋಗ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿವೇಕ ಖ್ಯಾತಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಶುಡ್ ದಟ್ ವಿವೇಕ ಖ್ಯಾತಿ ಬಿ ಅವಿಪ್ಲವ ಅಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವಿಪ್ಲವ ದಟ್ ಹಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ಯಾಟಿಕಲಿ ಕ್ಲಾರಿಫೈಡ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಮಿಸ್ಲೀಡಿಂಗ್ ವೇರ್ ಆಸ್ ಅನ್ ಇಂಟರಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅನ್ ಇಂಟರಪ್ಟೆಡ್ what is the, what is the context here so we don't uh, see any relevance of such a translations so now we get into uh, one of the yamas again continuing with the insights of acharya vachaspati mishra on the ashtanga yoga now as part of yama ahimsa satya asteya brahmacharya aparigraha yama ha we know that so satya or a truthfulness is part of yama so here we can see satyam so what is satyam in that uh, we know that as i have mentioned earlier vyasa's commentary he is the primary commentary to that vachaspati mishra has written sub commentary so while explaining uh, the word satya uh, vyasa says acharya vyasa says paratra swabodha sankrantaye vagukta sa yadina vanchita so how how should the truth be i have a particular understanding swabodha i have a particular understanding sankranti so i have to transfer my understanding to the other how do i do vagukta so paratra to others swabodha my understanding sankrantaye to convey how do i convey vagukta the speech that i utter the speech that i use how should be sa na vanchita so sa yadina vanchita it should not be kind of misleading or kind of uh, 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 there should be no element of cheating in that so whatever i have an understanding my speech should be such that it conveys my understanding completely in this process of conveying there should be no cheating <laughs> so to that only this much is stated by vyasa and this is illustrated beautifully by acharya vachaspati mishra when he says that vanchika yatha so he goes to uh, the mahabharata instance where he says dronacharyena swatanaya ashwatthama maranam ayushman satyadhana ashwatthama hatah ಇದು ಪೃಷ್ಟ ಯುಧಿಷ್ಠಿರ ಸೊ ದ್ರೋಣಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಆಸ್ಕ್ಸ್ ಯುಧಿಷ್ಠಿರ ಓ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸತ್ಯಧನ ಯು ಆರ್ ದ ಟ್ರೆಷರ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ಆಯುಷ್ಮನ್ ಐ ಬ್ಲಸ್ ಯು ವಿತ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಸೊ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅಶ್ವತ್ಥಾಮ ಡೈಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅಶ್ವತ್ಥಾಮ ಬೀನ್ ಕಿಲ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ಟು ದಟ್ ಯುಧಿಷ್ಠಿರ ಪ್ರತಿವಚನ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುಧಿಷ್ಠಿರ ಇಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಹಸ್ತಿನಂ ಅಭಿಸಂಧಾಯ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಥಿಂಕ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಹಸ್ತಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ ಎಲಿಫೆಂಟ್ ಸತ್ಯಂ ಹತೋಶ್ವತ್ಥಾಮಿ ಯಸ್ ಹಿ ಯುಧಿಷ್ಠ ಇನ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುಧಿಷ್ಠಿರ ವಿಚ್ ಅಶ್ವತ್ಥಾಮ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಎಲಿಫೆಂಟ್ ಹಸ್ತಿ ಅಶ್ವತ್ಥಾಮ ಸತ್ಯ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಸತ್ಯಂ ಹತ ಅಶ್ವತ್ಥಾಮ ಇತಿ ಎಸ್ ಅಶ್ವತ್ಥಾಮ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಕಿಲ್ಡ್ ತದಿದಂ ತದಿದಂ ಉಕ್ತ ಉತ್ತರ ನ ಯುಧಿಷ್ಠಿರ ನ ಯುಧಿಷ್ಠಿರ ತದಿದ ಉಕ್ತ ತದಿದ ಉಕ್ತ asya uttaram na yudhishthirasya swabodham sankrante this response that has been given by yudhishthira does not uh, convey what yudhishthira has in his mind swabodho hi asya hasti hanana vishayaha indriya janma so what is the bodha of yudhishthira he knows that an elephant called ashwatthama has been killed but uh, and which he has directly seen an elephant ashwatthama has been killed that is seen that is his understanding but uh, this statement hato ashwatthama that swabodha sankranti has not been uh, happened means his understanding of the elephant ashwatthama being killed is not adequately transferred through his words kintu anyah eva tasya tanaya bodha jata but uh, what was transferred what was kind of communicated is that 
the son of dronacharya has been killed so such an understanding has been uh, uh, transferred see uh, while the response by going by the response itself it is a truthful <laughs> it appears to be truthful but there is a vanchana in this there is a cheating in this so this kind of you cannot escape by saying that no i simply said ashwatthama was killed and what i said is true no you you should not go only by the level of words your bodha should be conveyed it is not the words which are <coughs> which can which, which can be justified but your understanding yudhishthira's understanding that an elephant called ashwatthama that is what it was in his mind but his words are not in line with what his understanding is so which means this is also asatyam it appears as satyam so this is satyava bhasa asatyam so in this way a very well known mahabharata instance is beautifully connected so again this also makes uh, the reading of the commentary uh, kind of delightful so these are not mere sermons but when when these yogic principles are connected with the epics then what happens is we we try to uh, look at the epics from a different dimension so the epics then become ramayana mahabharata then becomes the repository for the expression of yogic truths so that kind of a connection vachaspati mishra has brought about through his uh, commentary which is very essential see there is a tendency that, that to read the text individually and isolatedly no so everything is uh, is a whole so that connecting of the epics with uh, to illustrate the yogic uh, principles is very essential to understand that this is the flow of the same thought but it, while this is a theoretical expression that is in the form of a story so those bringing together that also helps us the continuity of uh, the concepts or the flow of principles so this is again an interesting contribution that uh, vachaspati mishra ji has made in his commentary then now from yama we move on to the niyama where we see that very interesting uh, there is this sutra after the uh, stating the shaucha santosha tapaswadhyayi ishvara pranidhanani niyamah he says there is the next sutra vitarka badhane pratipaksha bhavanam when trying to do the niyamas and also the yamas when conflicting thoughts comes so let me shaucha is the niyama means cleanliness when when i want to slacken my cleanliness attitude ah let me throw this dust here let me throw throw the piece of paper here when such vitarkas come opposing thoughts to the niyamas come then one has to do pratipaksha bhavanam and interestingly you can see that pratipaksha bhavanam has been explained by acharya vyasa again i am reminding vachaspati mishra's commentary is a sub commentary so he says vitarkanam bhashye nasti tirohitam iva kinchana so vachaspati mishra says see the commentary of vyasa itself is sufficient there is nothing which is uh, uh, unintelligible from the commentary itself the commentary itself is very clear hence uh, we can understand things from the commentary itself there is no need for me to elaborate see it is not that that i have started to write a commentary hence i have to write upon everything no if the source text is clear why should i comment upon see as bhoja's commentary in bhoja's commentary there is an interesting shloka where he just uh, ridicules Uh, certain commentators who expand in places where it is not necessary in the bhoja vritti to yoga sutra bhoja says durbodham yadativa tad vijahati spashtartham ityukti bhi spashtartheshu ati vistrutim vidadhati vyarthai samasadikai means wherever concepts are clear certain commentators uh, go out of the way and then use so many compound expressions and try to explain what is obvious so vajaspati mishra does not venture into explaining what is obvious from the commentary itself so whenever wherever is necessary 
only there he explains so this is a classical illustration as to how the commentaries and sub commentaries should be they should not go into elaborations where it is not required where things are very clear and the explanation is very obvious so that discipline as a commentator has been exemplarily exhibited by acharya vachaspati mishra in the context of niyamas and then in the same way in asanas also we see so yama niyama asana so in this way we can see that in asanas also there is a very critical insight that acharya vachaspati mishra gives where after giving the sthira sukham asanam there is a how to attain that sthira sukham asanam so there a very interesting sutra is given by patanjali maharishi two techniques are given prayatna shaithilya and ananta samapatti so two techniques are given so what is prayatna shaithilya slackening of effort and ananta samapatti is allowing the mind to dwell upon an endless principle or meditating upon lord ananta which is nagaraja or adishesha or shesha naga so the point is about the word prayatna shaithilya so asana practice has to be done by slackening the effort so that is the that is the interesting uh, dimension so any effort that is done should not be done with a slackened attitude so how does acharya patanjali say that uh, the sthira sukham asanam should have prayatna shaithilya slackening of effort now so there uh, here the contribution of acharya vachaspati mishra while vyasa is uh, 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 vyasa simply says uh, that uh, by doing prayatna shaithilya angam ejayatva or trembling of the limbs is avoided whereas he doesn't go into elaborating the mechanism so here unlike in the previous place where he said that everything is obvious i am not going to comment here as vyasa does not elaborate upon prayatna shaithilyam vachaspati mishra takes the responsibility and analyzes the prayatna shaithilyam slackening of effort in the practice of asana he says sam siddhi ko hi prayatnah sharira dharakah na yogangasya upadeshtavyasya asanasya karanam tasya tat karanatva upadesha vayarthyat swarasatah eva tat siddhe see the prayatna word that is used here is the effort what kind of effort it is that samsiddhika prayatna means a normal effort see in just just you are listening to the lecture i am giving the lecture in this kind of context is my body reasonably stable yes so how how do i maintain that stability now i am still moving front and back etc i am moving my body but still it's not extremely shaky there there is a natural stability that i maintain sam siddhika means natural a natural stability that i maintain so by that i am still in a seated position i have not slumped so i am still in a seated position so that is the sam siddhika prayatna which is being told so in doing the yoga asanas this natural casual sam siddhika prayatna should not be done because one thing is the shastra is not required to say that uh, 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 do such a prayatna so hence uh, this samsiddhika prayatna has to be slackened means this casual way of uh, doing or holding the body should be slackened that is the shaithilya here tasmad upadeshtavyasya asanasya asadhakah virodhi cha swabhavikah prayatnah तस्य यादृच्छिकासन हेतुतया आसन नियमोपहंतृत्वा तस्मात् उपदिष्ट नियम आसन उपदिष्ट नियमासनम अभ्यस्यत स्वाभाविक प्रयत्न शैथिल्याय प्रयत्न आस्थेय न अन्यथा उपदिष्टमासन सिद्ध्यती स्वाभाविक प्रयत्न शैथिल्यम आसन सिद्धि हेतु वेरी एक्सप्लिसिटली ही क्लारिफाइज दट the casual kind of practice of uh, uh, the placing of the limbs and holding of the body 
again will not lead to the sthira sukha state again when you see i am holding my body but i am not stable in this uh, position so hence samsiddhika or casual or that which comes naturally that effort should be slackened and a special focus is to be uh, brought in as to how i am holding my body so in padmasana if you have to sit you have to sit cross legged and then your back should be erect and then the hands are to be placed on the knees these are all the special prayatnas that are to be these are not swabhavika or samsiddhika prayatna these are all the special yogic prayatnas which are to be put in and then the casual prayatna should be slackened so that clarity this commentary brings about whereas again certain the contemporary interpretations uh, means quoting or misquoting the traditional commentators we see uh, that the practice of asana involves a level of pain at first and after a time this disappears by complete relaxation into the pose <laughs> now the the comparison is a stark you can see Uh, without violating the word meaning or kind of the grammatical framework of the expression vachaspati mishra has beautifully connected the meaning whereas here uh, we see that uh, initially there is a pain and later this dis- disappears by complete relaxation where is the concept of pain here where is initial practice what is the later practice all these dimensions which are non existent probably lack of understanding of the terminology and the context has brought about uh, this kind of an interpretation and i have looked into the hariharananda aranya's commentary also i don't see anywhere that such a kind of an interpretation is given by hariharananda aranya so hence these are all the problems with the current day interpretations which 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 allegedly quote traditional sources also so hence one should be very very wary of looking into the the contemporary translations in the context of understanding see this is a very critical practice that is asana practice which is very essential which is very foundational towards the attainment of uh, the further practice of pranayama etc and hence uh, one has to be very uh, careful in understanding this again here also what should be slacken a casual approach to the understanding of the text one has to put in the special effort to understand this text in the sense that we also need not put in any special understanding acharyas like vachaspati mishra has put in that effort extra effort we only need to learn the sanskrit language we only need to connect to the sanskrit language and then try to understand uh, what the commentary is try to say so in this way there are so many such examples so we have seen for ashtanga yoga yama niyama and asana Uh, so this is thali pulaka nyaya so as an as in the same way there are so many passages on pranayama where vachaspati uh, mishra clarifies what is exaggeration and what is pragmatic in the context of pranayama and then in the context of uh, pratyahara also he gives illuminating examples and also in the context of explaining dharana and dhyana he just like as he connected back to the epics Uh, ramayana and mahabharata he profusely quotes from the puranas thereby integrating uh, the yoga literature with or kind of not even integrating or just showing the fact that this is one whole the entire sanskrita shastra veda vangmaya is one whole and uh, and it need not be seen in compartments oh yoga is different purana is different itihasa is different no so that a holistic way of connecting every class of literature which are helpful to each other which are complementary to each other so that is also brought about in explaining dharana and dhyana and also and the right kind of uh, techniques so which has been already told by the commentator so that is uh, reiterated also means uh, in certain contexts vachaspati mishra says whatever acharya vyasa has said in this context it is clear but on certain important uh, dimension or, or on certain important concepts like abhyasa and vairagya which leads to the state of samadhi whatever has been clarified by vyasa 
is again underlined. So, Abhyasa and Vairagya, they lead to Chitta Vritti Nirodha. Do they independently lead to Chitta Vritti Nirodha or together they lead to Chitta Vritti Nirodha? Acharya Vyasa clarifies, Ubhaya Dhinaha Chitta Vritti Nirodha. Abhyasa has a role to play and a complementary role is played by Vairagya only by these two. Ubhaya Dhinaha Chitta Vritti Nirodha. The same idea is... Uh, clarified in much more lucid way by Acharya Vachaspati Mishra when he says Nirodhe Janaitavye Abhyasa Vairagya Yoho Samuchayaha Na Vikalpaha Ityaha means Abhyasa and Vairagya are to be taken together if one wants to attain Chitta Vritti Nirodha which is, which is Samadhi there is no optionality between Abhyasa and Vairagya so hence uh, while this has been the point has already been made by Vyasa an underlining of it the same idea with a special emphasis because this is a very critical uh, point. So hence, Vajraspati Mishra does not hesitate to repeat and lucidly clarify the same idea which is uh, explained by Vyasa also. So as a, a diligent commentator and also immersed in the understanding of yoga, you can see from the commentary of Vajraspati Mishra, a comprehensive grasp of the text and, uh, and he also offers the essence in a delightful poetic manner. In many occasions, he has clarified the intent and then illustrations from the epics and then avoiding unnecessary elaborations and then the probable meanings, mechanisms are uh, uh, given out and then connection with the Purana, the Itihasa and the entire Sanatana Dharma literature is connected together. And then what is exaggeration, what is pragmatic in the context of Pranayama, he has uh, clarified. And then in certain cases of uh, emphasis, he underlines and repeats what the source co commentary uh, says. So hence, in this way, Vachaspati Mishra, so these are the beauty of uh, the, uh, the, the traditional commentaries. So these are the benefits that one gains by going into, though it may be a little bit difficult, uh, anything that is to be done methodically, diligently and meticulously, it may not be easy, it may not come easy, but if one puts in that effort, the knowledge that one reaps uh, is authentic and without any doubt, we can go about doing the practice because yoga is a practice discipline. So hence, here clarity is more important and hence, going into the commentaries of uh, Acharyas like Vachaspati Mishra is very, very beneficial and clarifies uh, so many practical dimensions. That's why in the beginning, uh, Vachaspati Mishra, while writing this Tattva Vesharadi commentary, he says, Natva Patanjali Mrishim Vedavyasena Bhashite Sankshipta Spashta Bhakvartha Bhashye Vyakya Vithasyate. So initially he committed that the commentary that I am going to write is a Sankshipta, which is going to be precise and then a Spashta. Uh, it is also very clear, cl it clarifies many aspects. And also Bhakvartha, it is not just uh, it is not just linear. It will present various shades of meanings. So these are all the intentions with which uh, uh, a commentary is written. So you can also see that uh, what are all the intentions with which a commentator writes a commentary. It should be precise. It should be clear, and it also brings out various layers of meanings, as exemplified by a few examples that I could uh, gather from Vachaspati Mishra's commentary. Whatever he had stated initially, he has abundantly uh, justified uh, these initial statements, and hence it is very essential. And uh, I, I, off, I repeat often a particular shloka. Uh, from uh, <clears throat> the Vyasa's commentary where he says that Agamen Anumanen Dhyana Abhyasa Rasena Cha Tridha Prakalpayan Pragnya Labhate Yoga Muttamam So that is, it is very essential that Agama, uh, Anumana uh, and Abhyasa, three essential aspects are there for yoga. So for that the Agama, the knowledge from the text, it should be very clear and that clarity is attained not only by the source text, by also studying, spending time uh, to understand the intricacies brought out by the traditional commentators and which has been, uh, and Vachaspati Mishra's commentary 
Tattva Vaisharani is one classical example as to how resourceful the traditional commentaries can be. So uh, with these, I conclude my words on uh, this topic, uh, insights from Vachaspati Mishra Tattva Vaisharani on Ashtanga Yoga. Thank you very much. Namaste. Since, uh, since Dr. Jairaman Mahadevan ji is not uh, present here, uh, I, through this uh, uh, video, I communicate my thanks to him.